Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take apart the peg and the shifter so I can access the engine cover. I'm going to take the cover off so we can access the uh, stator assembly. Uh, we're going to be replacing three of the screws on the stator assembly. Okay, you're going to need uh, three four millimeter nylon screws. Uh, the reason you use nylon and not plastic is because nylon is uh, will last longer. Plastic would crack as soon as it got hot. Now there are three screws. Screw one, screw two, and underneath is screw number three. The reason we're doing this is because we need to unground your brush assembly. Okay, looks like I'm going to button everything up. I'll let you know that you can access your stator assembly through your small, the little the Yamaha side cover picture there. Uh, the reason I pulled the entire case off uh, was so that you could actually see, get in there and really see what it is that I'm doing. Uh, to make this uh, less abstract. Okay, so it looks like I'm uh, just about done. Yeah, there I go. Okay. Okay, charging system up close. Battery is positive lead. Has uh, two lines. One line goes to my Q switch. The other one goes from my regular rectifier back into my battery through the amp, the fuse there. <coughs> Let's see here. And on the other side, I've got uh, basically the regulator rectifier dangling from a couple zip ties on the left. Uh, what I did is I basically um, kind of soft wired the thing and wrapped it in a rag um, to uh, run it a bit and make sure everything was working. Um, and once I was sure everything was working, we're going to do what we're going to do today, which is we're going to switch it over and clean it up and um, hook up an actual um, terminals to the e-gen so you can unplug and, and plug it in and unplug it. Uh, and you can kind of see for yourself, it's quite a rat's nest right now. But uh, all said and done, I think it's going to uh, look a lot better. Okay, so stick with me here. This is where it gets uh, a little more technical. I'm going to unwrap everything here and just show you one wire at a time. <clears throat> First one you're going to see is a black wire. Black wire comes from regulator rectifier, goes to your, po your negative, your ground on your battery. <clears throat> Next we've got, uh, I believe we're going to look at the red one. Let's see. So yeah, again, the black one is up, out of the regulator rectifier, into the negative terminal. So in other words, you're grounding the regulator rectifier. Next, we've got the red one, comes out of the regulator rectifier through a fuse and into the positive. Now, it's highly recommended that you do not overlook this fuse part. Um, I'm currently running a... 20 amp, which seems to be working out fine. Uh, recommended would be uh, 10, 15, or 20. Uh, 30 amps um, is uh, a little too much. <clears throat> so I'll just attach this thing again, and then let's keep going. Let's see here. So I've got, uh, let's see, three white wires that come out of your regulator rectifier. This is really simple attach them to the three white wires coming out of your stator rotor assembly. Which ones? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I believe that it does not necessarily make any major difference here. Um, that I've just gotten really lucky. Next you've got green from the regulator rectifier. Attach that very simply to the green coming from the rotor stator assembly. Another tricky part is the brown which comes from the regulator rectifier and goes into what you would have coming from your stator rotor assembly. In my instance, the wire is black, so it's brown to black. Now, in between the brown to black, you also need to feed it juice, which means that <clears throat> when the key switch is off, no juice is fed to the brown and black wire connection. When the key switch is on, juice is fed to it. One more time from a different angle. <clears throat> regular rectifier. Let's see, we've got uh, white, 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 green, brown, black, and red. Okay. So, uh, so you get the black wire, comes from the regulator rectifier. It's going to go down and directly into your negative or grounded terminal on your battery. <coughs> Let's see here, next is the uh, red. Red comes from the regulator rectifier and it goes straight through a roughly a 10 amp fuse into your battery. 
Let's see here. Next we're going to look at the green wire, which is from the regulator rectifier, and very, very simply, it goes into the green lead coming from the rotor stator assembly. That's one of your brushes, by the way. Let's see here. And then you've got your brown wire, which is the opposite brush. Comes from the regulator rectifier, and this one's the tricky one. What it does is it splits. Um, and uh, I say split, what I really mean is at this point it is both fed electricity from your key switch and it is also feeding electricity to both uh, the regulator rectifier as well as the rotor stator assembly uh, the brush that is, that's another brush line <coughs> other than that, uh, let's see, I think there's uh, what's left, white uh, the three white wires that come from the regulator rectifier very simply attached to the three white wires coming from your stator rotor assembly. Okay, I'm going to uh, cut or uh, unplug everything, getting it ready for the uh, terminal connector block, which I purchased from Mike's XS for um, maybe uh, three or four dollars. It's an eight terminal connector. Okay, I've got the regulator rectifier over on the workbench. I am um, basically clipping on all brand new terminal connectors. Uh, then I'm taking the uh, white block and I'm going to uh, slowly but surely connect everything um, one by one. When you slide the uh, terminals into the back of the block, you hear a click and you know it's in. Here I am again. I've got the regular rectifier with the terminal block attached. Um, make sure that when you're doing this, you really pay attention to which end is up on the terminal block and you really pay attention to uh, making sure that you've got all of your wires in the right order. Um, you get a couple of these mixed up and you're going to break stuff. <clears throat> so I've also got the terminal block already attached to the other end of the rotor stator assembly. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and attach my uh, uh, fuse into my inline fuse holder. Um, attach my lead. Uh, let's see here. Keep everything clean. <clears throat> And I've got uh, the block to attach. It's as simple as uh, pushing the little tab down, you know, and give it a squeeze, and that's pretty much her. The only thing left at this point is uh, to wrap it up, clean it up, um, maybe some uh, electrical tape wrapped, maybe some um, wire cover sleeves, um, zip ties, whatever you'd like. Nothing left to do except uh, take it for a ride. So uh, clean it up, uh, go for a 20 minute ride, come back, check your battery. You should be uh, reading about uh, 14 and a half volts. Uh, if you're not, first check your uh, connections. Second, check your rotor. The XS650 rotor is notoriously bad. Um, and then from there, start going through and double checking all of your other parts to make sure nothing is faulty. Beyond that, um, Thanks for watching my video, and uh, have fun.